<laughs> All right, I'm, oh. s- I'm sitting here with Gabrielle. How you doing, Gab? I'm good. All right, you just want to tell me, like, how old you are and, um, like, where you're from, stuff like that? I'm um, 36 years old, and I'm from Kensington. Okay, so you grew up in Kensington? Yep. Okay. How and how long have you been homeless for right now? Um, two years. Two years? Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and what is your drug of choice? Um, crack cocaine and heroin. Okay. Now, were you here when the regular heroin was yep. down here? And then it hit that no. Yeah. Um, now, do you, did you... Were you aware of the change when it was happening? No, but I remember, like, specifically when it happened. I remember we had, like, a snowstorm. We were... Um, basically, everything was shut down. And one weekend, it was right before New Year's Eve... Uh, like a hundred some people died. Yeah, that was in 2016. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, like I, people didn't know what fentanyl was, and yeah. I remember doing it in my head. I would swear it, and my head would hurt so bad when I'd be coming out die. Really? Yeah, did something to your brain, I guess. Wow. And you, um, so we talked off air. You are a registered nurse, right? Right. Okay. Now, where'd you go to school for that? Temple. So you went to Temple and. And so, you, wow, it's it's so many people I interview here, they're so educated and, you know, it's just like drugs don't discriminate. Mm-hmm. You said you have a, a master's degree in everything, right? Right. All right. And so how long have you been on the streets for, like, this this run? Two years. Oh, two years. I'm sorry, Brad. Yeah. Okay. Have you tried any treatment programs? Yeah, I tried going to Eagleville. Mm-hmm. I tried getting help, period. And I actually went to the hospital once. You know how they say you can go to the hospital, the emergency room? I went in there and I said, listen, I want to get help. And they sent me to three different hospitals, a rehab, and Ubered me down here with a bag of dope. Handed me a bag of dope before I got the Uber. Because they don't, they don't want to deal with it. It's just like... Yeah. I, it's, I mean, do you have any desire to get clean now? Or are you okay yeah. with So you, you kind of do want to get clean? Yeah. All right. Um, do you know where to go if, when you like the prevention point or anything like that? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of resources. They're not real good, but right. there are a lot of ways to get help. Okay. So you had a, a couple quick questions. I'll let you go. Um, you had a, a crazy story that happened to you down here. Yes. Can you just let them know? I just, that's the reason why I wanted to talk to you and put this like how crazy um, things happened down uh, here. When um, when my parents first discovered I got cancer from being a nurse, I got radiation exposure. My parents found a bag of dope on me. I have an older brother who was an addict for ever. He was started when he was twelve put my parents to hell so I was always like the tough one in my family like the responsible one so they changed my locks to my door got a restraining order against me they told family court that I tried to sell my kids for crack never touch crack at that point and they emptied my bank account out thinking that if I didn't have my kids I would stop what I was doing and go back they didn't know I had cancer so um, I wandered up on the street met some guy who was 20 years older than me he sold me to a bit. Man. So you were like sex trafficked is pretty. Right. And then it took me six years of the missing person. My parents gave liquidified every asset they had, looked for me, hired countless PIs, um, everything. And they finally found me. And six years it took for me to be rescued. I came back a month later. My parents were murdered. Man. It's a lot of trauma to go through. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's a lot of the reason why you're, you know, down here getting high. Yeah, you self-medicate. I mean, it's easy to get high. It's hard to deal with the shit that you got high for. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I remember when I got sober, it's like you get sober, and then it's like, okay, now I got to deal. Everything comes floating back, yeah. You're like, all right, now I got to deal with all, because the thoughts are all still in your head, you right. know? It don't go away. No, it definitely doesn't go away, and, you know, when you've been masking or pushing down those thoughts for so long and then all of a sudden they're all coming flying out it can be really uh, overwhelming now where do you um do you have a safe place to sleep here out here um yeah like i have a wonderful boyfriend who protects me and mm-hmm. we do have a place to sleep. all right now hopefully i'll be interviewing him tomorrow maybe yeah. where he's got to do some thing he seems like a real good guy though Yes. Well, when it comes to me, he's got a very bad temper, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's got to be hard, you know, 
having a significant other down on the streets. I mean, a lot of people take advantage of me. I've known him since forever. Uh, and I kind of stuck by him when he was in jail. He does a lot of time in there. Okay. So that means a lot to him, though. Or that you stuck by him in jail. Yeah, man, that's, you know, it's a lonely place in jail. Very lonely. That you're a, a, you're a good good woman, a good, <laughs> good good girlfriend for doing that. Especially when, if you're sticking through when you're on the streets and stuff. And that takes a lot of work to, yeah. you know, because you got to get the money up to... Uh, right, but I mean, he's worth it. Yeah, so. that's good. And it's, I, it's always better if you're down here, at least have a, someone you can lean on and trust and... Mm-hmm. Oh, it's awesome to have somebody that you know isn't going to steal from you or hurt you or leave you. Yeah. Yeah. What's well, everyone I talk to? It's because of the xylazine or the trank. It's like you pass out so fast, and then it's. Sometimes I don't even need it on me. And you're already asleep. I don't even finish injecting it. Yeah. Wow. And and so when you wake up, you're almost automatically in withdrawal again. Then. Yeah, it's like every two hours you're in withdrawal. Wow. Okay, so, and you, you were on the regular H for a while before. Right. Now this, how much worse is this withdrawal? The regular heroin was so easy to get off of. Like, I detoxed myself three times from that. It was yeah. so, three days are done. Yeah. This shit, you can die from going through the withdrawal. Yeah. That's why, like, I, I hate telling people that I, you know, that I'm when I'm down here that I'm an addict or recovering I went through because it's so it's a, such a different animal down here right than it, than it was then so it's that much worse the, the withdrawal yeah like you, you're hot and cold at the same time you're hungry and you're not hungry you're sick to your stomach um, you throw up and it, like once you don't have it for like five hours you throw up everything in your body into a vial now out. this is going to be an embarrassing question but like do you have you shit your pants and stuff yeah okay because a lot everyone i talk to says they shit their pants from this stuff yeah. and that's what just because you're you're snotting out so so much no i mean that's going through withdrawal oh it's during the withdrawal oh, oh okay i didn't know if it was when you were like dead asleep or whatever yeah. all right um now the people that watch this the channel they like to send stuff okay. every once in a while is there anything that you need clothes. clothes okay like what kind of clothes small like small anything uh, anything small like uh tights yeah. like leggings sure, stuff like that and yeah, i nothing okay so like this right here is all you have yeah that's it mm-hmm. all right so we'll work on getting you clothes uh shoes or you like the flip flop you like them like this kind no, like oh. slides. Oh, you like the slides better? Like the Adidas ones or whatever? Yeah. All right, so slides. Um, I do, do you guys have a tent or something? No, we need one. Okay, because I just put... We got like a makeshift one. Okay, I just put a um, tents on the Amazon wish list. So when people watch this, hopefully someone will do that and we can send you a tent That's or whatever. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, Food-wise, what do you... Well, one more question, I'll let you go. Like, what do you do for food? Do you like... Just get what you can, or do you, like, go to the the food shelters or the food kitchens and stuff? It depends. Like, because there's two of us. Mm-hmm. He puts me before him, but, like, neither one of us eat enough. But for the most part, like, I eat ice cream. It's yeah. my daily diet. <laughs> ice cream? Oh, well, I guess it's got protein in it. You know? <laughs> it's no. calcium, right? Yeah. Well, I remember how what a horrible eater I was during active addiction, so mm-hmm. I, I get it. And they had food out there out here then. No, not so much. Yeah. Um, so they have food here. You just rather eat the ice cream. Yeah. Okay. All right, Gabrielle. Thanks again for doing this. No problem. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna continue doing this in the future. I'm gonna keep we're gonna you know, like a little series. Yeah. See how you're doing. All, All right. right.